the basics of the internet and how do we use the internet for education purposes. The domain is information and communication technology, subdomain internet. Technology literacy area is the approach that we are first working with. Today's objective is each one of us shall be able to navigate through the World Wide Web using different search engines. Shall be able to develop criteria for evaluating authentic websites and evaluate them. Shall be able to tell or differentiate between educational and non-educational websites. So we shall be sailing through these three specific objectives. We are setting the scene. How shall we share today's session? We shall look at the general context and basic vocabulary of the internet, identify components that are needed for internet use, run about the World Wide Web. We need to increase familiarity with internet communications and formats. Categorically, we can look at email as a way of sharing information. Practice searching, and then we shall look at we shall look about at toolbars, favorites, security, and some other icons. Who can tell us what the internet can be? What do you understand by the term internet? Mr. Onyo, yes. Bail her out. I don't know So we shall find platforms. In there, we shall find it, the World Wide Web inside here. We are getting connected. What is the hardware required? Computer. And in this computer, we have a modem. We have uh, th these devices that enable the computer to transmit data over telephone lines and cable lines. Everyone has seen a modem, right? This one has Wi-Fi. We have other modems that you can connect to your PC internet service provider. In this case, the internet service provider is Airtel. Then we have a web browser. Knowing the domain name helps us to get into the websites quickly. Helps us to get the content so much easier. Helps us to reference people easier. For example, when I am looking for any government, any government issue of the Republic of Uganda, go to their websites and see. They will be ending with .org, .gov, .gov. .org, for example, non-profit organizations. What does, you can give other examples. What does UNESCO have? www.unesco.org When it comes to a website, then we see what does the Ministry of Education have at the end. When we are searching on the internet, such things we should look for them. We should always take care. Am I looking for a government website? When it is ending like this, how shall I evaluate? Who signed there? Whose telephone number is there? When was it updated? We are saying that in our objectives, we shall be able to evaluate a website and say, this is fit for this. Browsers. What do browsers stand for? Browsers are applications that interpret the documents that make up a website. They are always written in languages like HTML, C++, program, as internet users, as, as teachers, we ought not to get so much deep into the programming language. It is okay if you run, but as a user, you ought to know what a browser is, how do I get the document, simply because you cannot get everything in that on the internet. World Wide Web is the most popular and promising method of organizing and accessing information. My example, I am using Internet Explorer here and I chose to use 
Obita as my as my browser. But there is also Mozilla Firefox here. Whatever you use, you will be able to get into the internet. So we shall be able to search, find the content. How do we share the content? And how do we give the content? I have my examples of the tools that we can use to browse the web. Internet Explorer, yeah, how many yeah. you can download. Safari, Netscape, Obitam, Google Chrome. The list is wrong. Uh, On the internet we have web page and we have website. A web page is a single HTML error, error document. How do we feel this, Mr. Omo? Hypertext mark language. Hypertext mark, mark language. As I said at the beginning, these languages, the C plus programming, as instructors, we may not need it so much. It is nice to know information, but we need to know that web pages are designed with programs. A website is a collection of several pages. They are all connected together and usually at the same internet address. Sometimes a site can also be called a single web page. Searching the web, you need a search engine. As we are trying to evaluate this website, then we shall need to know, do you find the owner's information there? What content is there? What content is there? How, what was the last update? The last update, when you get here, the last update was December 1st, that is 2016. The link is put on top here. Then, all, most, most pages are in. When you click here, you will go to the workshop report. When you come down, link to drawing basics, let us share common programming processes. When you click here, you proceed to another page, web page, which has programming processes. We are sharing information. Then we must make sure we are sharing right information. Otherwise, other experts across the globe will close you down. What happens when you create and share something on the internet? When you create and share something, your work is automatically protected under copyright. When you put CMD on your laptop, most of you have a laptop, CMD, and you go to command prompt. Command prompt is, your langu is the language of the computer. This is not virus, but this is where they programmed your computer from. So when you put IP config or then you will see what will happen. IP config C O N F I G slash or then that's where you will find the IP address of your laptop. So when my laptop is stolen, then they need to get to the IP address, the physical address. This language is the one we are referring to. The physical address, they will get to the physical address, which is here. Each computer whether it is the same manufacturer has a different address. So when I am talking about uh, copyright, we have uh, copyright forbids people from using your content wrongly, but enables the internet, it enables, the, it en it en enables internet users to make sure that they are using, they are using the, the information. We are yet to look at how do I evaluate a website. Which website is an authentic website? When you look at education.com, then we shall get into who owns this, who updates it, how many people have accessed it, whom was it made for. If you are content, if you are an instructor and your content you put is for primary one, then that becomes a problem. We have GIMP, this is an alternative for Adobe Photoshop. We have Photoscape, Adobe Illustrator, and many. We have Ubuntu here, alternative to Microsoft Office. Ubuntu is running on Linux operating system, and Microsoft Office is running on Windows. 
so you can see other videos now where is my website my, my youtube channel okay let's look at when you click that what happens this is one way but you can still first go to youtube straight you can still first go to youtube straight youtube.com youtube.com so when you go to youtube i wanted to explain that when you go to youtube very many things will come some of the of the of the videos that you don't want your runners to watch will also come first so if you have your youtube you will only put the truth if you give them the link where you are going you will have secured them you will have secured them not everything is true on the internet you can also acquire wrong information when, for example when you go to the wiki wikipedia wikipedia it is you to get a definition and then you compare with what you know but it is true when you go to cross the encyclopedia and you get a quote that is why we are running how to get the right information high installation cost internet for education is not easy to install and is not also easy to manage that's why patience for educators is important most especially a case for uganda the case for uganda when there is the, the, in, the internet service providers have not stabilized the internet for education version for educational use that one is loading we can come back so i will i will want you to get this as your assignment I, ha I am going to send this, this, this PowerPoint and then this PowerPoint you open your email and when you open your email then you send it as group mail to all the colleagues in this room and you also copy it to the facilitator to me then you also send to them PDF of this very document. The question is, converting the PowerPoint to PDF, do I need internet? Can you work it offline? If you are working it offline, then you need to download a PDF converter. When okay. you put smallpdf.com, smallpdf.com allows you to Convert any document into any version from PowerPoint, PDF, PDXL, PDF, Word, PDF. How do we evaluate websites? Why evaluate a website is the question. Anyone can create a website that is right. How do you know the author is an expert on the topic? How do you know the information is up to date? How do you know the information is accurate and is what you need? All this generated reason why we evaluate a website. As the educators, we need to evaluate the website which we are giving, which we are recommending our learners to use. So similarly, when we are evaluating website, we have who, what, when, where, and why, and why. Who wrote the pages? Are they, an exp are they experts on the topic? Is information about the author included? How can I find out more about the author? Is there a way to contact the author? What would happen to you if you visited the you, you have, I know you have been visiting some of the sites and you say, you find oops 
it is unable to roll. Then you need to check on when was it last updated. So educational resources, you need to make sure that you see when it was last updated. All of those give us a clue on how to give the right link for our learners. Where does the information come from? Just as we shared on the open and closed encyclopedia, if you are quoting where you are getting the information, it gets the runners more clear direction. Does the author include references? Where can I find out more about the owner of the site? Uh, check the URL web, or the web address. Does an organization, institution, or person's name appear in the address? What is the domain? Is it .gov? Is it .edu? We have seen them. Is it .org? When you are going to pay for hosting, even the money is not the same. If you are hosting it for a commercial site, that becomes different from someone who wants it as an educational website.